we are doing more so. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know, I must say it unto you. Lord, we know that with her, but voice. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but to thy me. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. I want to give God thanks this morning that we are alive and well. Although we gather this morning on a sad occasion to put away the remain of our dear sister who have lived a life that is pleasing and we know that it suits the Lord to take him away and today take her away and today we are here to put her away. We want to give the family our condolences and friends. We not like you have no hope. As the scripture said, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. She rests from her labor and her work is following her. Now we are going to blend our voices together and we are going to sing this, this song, the song, the hymn, To Canaan Land, I'm on my way, where the souls never die.
Corinne Parr, prayed by Minister Corinne Thompson, this niece of the deceased. Praise God. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Our God and our Father, we just want to glorify you, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to magnify you. We want to thank you because you are good and you are God. And as we come on this occasion, Lord, I like how the pastor says that you take Sister Anna, and we only put her away. And so, Lord, as we come to put her remains away, I ask of you, Lord, that you would help us to think about the song we just sang. We are all on our way to that land where the soul of man never dies. We are either going to that place of rest with you, but everyone is on a journey where the soul never dies. And so, Father, we thank you for the life of my aunt. I thank you for the life of our sister, Anna. I thank you for the life of a mom. I thank you for the life of a cousin, of an auntie. Lord, she's been a friend. She's been so much to so many. But today, you have taken her, and we are laying her remains today. And so, Father, we ask of you that you come to each of us. And as you bring comfort, as you bring peace, more than all, you are the God of hope. Lord, as we stand in your presence today, and those who are on Zoom, on Facebook, whatever media it might be, we all have a soul, an eternal soul. And so Aunt Anna has lived a life. She has a testimony that she knew where she was going, to that place where her soul will live with you in eternity. But God, there might be some among us who are not sure of where their soul is going to be. And so I pray today that in the service, that as we do the service, as we encourage loved ones, as we weep with those who weep, mourn with those who mourn, that more than all, God, souls would come to you today. Those who haven't known you, God, those who are not ready to spend eternity with you, that today, God, while those of us rejoice as we are going to that place, remember those who are on their way to hell, even in this tabernacle today. Speak today, God, through a song, through the preaching, through whatever way, Holy Ghost, speak to hearts today and grant that no one who visited this service, be it online or in person, would leave the same that they came. Bring home souls to you, God. And we thank you for the life of our dear sister. And we ask you to give to Howard and to everyone who mourn at this time. We don't grieve like those who have no hope. But I pray you give comfort, you give strength, you give grace. And we thank you for a beautiful weather, Lord, to have the service today. And we just pray you bless everything else that is on this program to be said and done in Jesus' name. From Psalms 91 to 12, read by Errol Stanberry, nephew of the deceased. This reading is taken from Psalms 91 um, to 12. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even through ads from the earth, and the world, even the everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and say it, return, ye children of men. For thousand years in thy sight are as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away, as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning, they are like grass, which grow it up 
In the morning, it flourished and grew up. In the evening, it cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by the rough are thy troubled. Thou lost it set in inheritance before thee, our secret sins in the light of the contendants. For all our days are passed away. In the rough we spend our years, as take it that it is told. Therefore, years, sorry, three score years and ten, by the reason of strength, they be four score years as at thy strength landed in sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so it is wrath. So teach us to number our days, and we may apply our days that we may apply our art unto wisdom. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Teach us to number our days and apply our arts unto wisdom. Praise God. Sister Stanberry is gone, but he's not here alone. We will be going too. And those who are not saved, Moses said, teach us. Let us check upon ourselves and number our days because it won't be long we'll be leaving this unfriendly world. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we'll have an item from Veronica Stanberry, niece of the deceased. I am determined to hold on to the end. Jesus.
From the mountain you have climbed, look ahead, there comes Jesus right on time. I suffered the life journeys, they were so hard and dry, and it seems like hope was gone and I will die. Imagine when we gather on the throne and that day when we started to sing, yeah. when angels have to fold their wings yeah. and listen to hear us sing redemption song. Yeah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now we'll have an item by the WCG. Praise the Lord. Some wonderful day we're living for glory.
pure. There's nothing but happiness. Yes. One day we'll join heaven that heavenly choir. choir. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Are you anticipating for that day yes. when we'll join that heavenly choir? And we'll change, we'll have our wardrobe up there, yeah. that we will change, praise yeah. God. What a day that will be. The songwriter said, when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, what a day, what a glorious day that will be. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. 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 Now we have a second lesson we're taking from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58, read by Marie Stanbury Baker, or Parker. Morning, church. Morning. Our second lesson comes to us from the book of 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verse 50 to 58. Here begin. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perish, perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be, will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory, where, O oh death, is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we have the MCG. Amen of the church. In the party of duty, if I were to be the close of the day,
lovely song, and I've gone the last mile of the way. Sister Stanbury has run her full race, and she has dropped her baton for us to take up our task. And we too must ask God to give us the grace that we will go to the last mile of the way. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, men. Now we'll have a tribute by Deaconess Latime from the James Hill Church. When I've gone the last mile of the upright for the end of that man is peace the life of an icon of the James Hill Church of God Rubina Stanberry affectionately known as Sister Anna Sister Anna was loved by everyone a woman of God a Sunday school teacher a choir member treasurer the best one could ever find she taught me many things, but two things that stood out in my mind. She said that the faintest memory is better than the, the faintest ink is better than the genius memory. And it, not, it is not the hundred dollar that you spend, it's the ten dollar that you save, a woman of wisdom. She valued her Christian life. She allowed the Holy Spirit to guide her and to lead her in paths of righteousness. She was indeed a child of God, well respected, well loved. Sister Anna, I am going to miss you. You have fought a good fight. You have kept the faith. You have finished the course. Henceforth is laid up for you a crown of righteousness. And not only to Sister Anna, but all of us that will live godly. At the end of her journey, we will get that reward. Sleep on, Sister Anna. I know I will miss you, but you are in a better place. I'll meet you someday in glory. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Well said, Sister Joy. We're going to join in one of Sister Hannah's songs. I remember the Wednesday before she went to the hospital, I went there and uh, hold her hand and we were singing this song. We have a hope within our soul and it's brighter than the perfect day. God has given us a spirit oh, and we want the world to live in our love.
pray. We have a hope. She has a hope that is brighter Amen. than a perfect day. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will have a tribute from the Kavali Church of God. We have a hope. indeed we have a hope within our souls that is brighter than a perfect day praise the Lord tribute for the life of Deacon Stanberry she would always say I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord I met Deacon Stanberry in the year 1999 when Pastor Trout and some of the members launched a crusade at the K Valley Market House. She started, they started having services in the market. And so I went to visit one Sunday. I wasn't a Christian then. I was going to the New Testament church in Indian Town back then. And I could remember when Jackie Chowd said, I'm coming up by your church to talk to the pastor about you. But it so happened one Sunday morning, I could not get a right to go to Indian Town. And so I go over by the church in the market. And there I became saved and got baptized in this faith. They always have services on Sundays and sometime on Tuesday nights by the play field. Sister Anna was one of the persons who has spoken to me in a still small voice. You know that the Lord had a still small voice, but talking with Sister Hannah, it was different. She was such a jovial person soft-spoken, humble, love to work, love the work of the Lord, and the building of the kingdom of God. When the building was erected for Cable, the Church of God services, where it is now, we go there and we work, we do some night work with some of the other virgin, and Sister Hannah would always be there. We went out and we walked through the communities on Sunday evening, and we have open air meetings, you know, seeking souls for the kingdom of God. Deacon Stanberry was such a unique person. She would encourage us as new believers to look steadfast and always pray and fast and trust God's word. Over time, when Reverend Mackenzie came, our host pastor here, she appointed Deacon Stanberry to be leader of the K Valley Church of God group. We had a good rapport, myself and her. As we served together, I can remember one Sunday, while she was about to break the word, her topic was, claim your healing. I was moderating the service then. The Spirit said to me that I must hug her. I did so, and I felt a cold feeling pass through my body. I, co I complained to her, and I whispered, and said, I am healed. And she said that I must claim my healing. After going back to the doctor to do some tests, they did not see 
what they were looking for again. So I came back. I came back and I said to her, Deaconess, your topic, your words has healed my body. I, I know what the doctor was looking for. And so when I got back, it was not there. It was all gone. And up until today, it is out. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God used deaconess to preach a word, and I receive my healing. Thank you, Lord, for answering. She continues to come and do the work of the Lord and she is, until she stopped. We had some very good times together, working for the Lord. She was love of the children for Sunday school. She would always ask for them even when they stopped coming. Even when they stopped coming there. She was a good encourager. She was a faithful worker of the Lord and the church. She do the church business well. You know, when it comes to money, you have to take people to handle money. And I can give a test of that from Sister Hannah's. We used to go to Crooked River church for a conference some Sunday evening. It was a blessing. I thank God that I met Deaconess Sandberry. She instilled some good principles in me. Her soul rests in peace and light perpetual shines upon her. We 
are going down the valley one by one. Human comrade, you are I will bear at none. But a tender hand will guide us lest we fall. Christ is going down the valley with us all. We are going down the valley. We are going down the valley. We are going towards the setting of the sun. We are going down the valley. We are going down the valley. We are going down the valley. One by And I want 
to run where the angels are shot. a very special place. That's where Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. All right? And again, for those who don't know the Lord, the place of the dead, there's another place where the rich man went and he was in misery. So we have two choices. We be with the Lord or we are in misery. Praise God. May God help us to make the right choice today for those of us who haven't known the Jesus who is going to prepare that place called the New Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I am Corinne Thompson, niece of Aunt Anna, and I will be um, just doing some tributes and offering and all of that. But at this time, we want to remember the life of a great woman, Aunt Anna, Sister Anna, Mommy, whoever you call her friend. Praise God. And we are going to be calling Cheryl Savory to come and just give us some remembrance of that great life. Praise God. Good afternoon, church. Um, Antonia and her life has been rolling in my mind. So I'm going to make it short and as I remember. I met Antonia in Zion on a visit to see Granny Rose, that's my grandmother and her mother. She had one son, an active little boy, and she was a dressmaker. I was her niece, and like Howard, I always remember to play where she can see us. So Howard would have said to me, stay right here where Aunt and the machine is. All right, stay right here where Mama Machine is. And if you can't see me, you said no. But if you can, say yes. That means we know where our boundaries were. If she, can, if she can't see us, she would call, Howard, where are you? Mm -hmm. uh, Howard, where are you there? I suppose he gets that a lot. Um, she spent I spent quite a lot of time with her. She was a Christian. Plenty of the time she spent in the church. Aunt Anna left Zion for James Hill. Wherever I would visit Fairburn, 
and about to Antonus house was one of the stop. I would do as others would do if I don't want to stop. And said, morning sister Anna, and walk fast so that she would not recognize. But she would not have it at all. She would call me back and ask, a who ya call sister Anna? Me's your auntie, call me Aunt Anna. Then she would ask, how is your mother? That would be Vinet. She would then say, around her sister Katie ago, give her this for me and wait there a minute. Hold on, no move yet. Give this to her for Granny Rose. Aunt Anna was always busy doing this and that, all sort of things. She worked hard. She didn't, she worked hard. She didn't like lazy people around her. her. She would always say, the devil find work for idle hands. She often say, I have to work hard for what I want. I don't have, I don't have, I don't know how to thief. For me no want the police can tell me if you walk fast. <laughs> so I work and save for what I want and, lie and take care of them. It is not what you earn, but it is what you save from what you earn that will help you. You must save. You hear me? You feel save. The little board house at Crossroad was her was a prayer house of faith for her. The shop counter was her pulpit. The bed and and the bed would be her altar. And the machine a place where she would sing. Aunt Anna loves to sing. The house of the house was good anywhere in the house was good for a prayer. Her faith was strong and she believed God would have helped her through, for her would come true for her, and that he did. Aunt Anna lived, a f Aunt Anna lived, lived by faith, and every now and then you would hear her sing, I am living by faith with Jesus alone. I trust and confide within his great love. Early in the morning, she would call Howard and myself, to get water before the crowd come. She would be making trips with us if it was early. The pipe was near, but water was scarce. She was always on the mission for, God, for the Lord. Be it prayer meeting, cottage meeting, open ear meeting, convention, crusade, trust. Trust me, Aunt Anna would have been there. Faith in God leads her to her own home where she lived for the rest of her days. Faith's cottage, she said. It was built by hard work and faith in God. On a Sunday morning, she would call everyone in the house for devotion to start the week. Scripture reading, scripture reading song and prayer. Everyone in the house has to participate. We must take part. So if you can't, you better learn and fast. To this day, prayer is a part of my life. Sunday school, that was a must, and you can't believe it. You have to be early. If you are early for Sunday school, you are early for church. She was a teacher. She was a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, a leader, and of course, she was a mother, a great one at that. Her church, her son, and her business was her life. She was prim and proper. If you're dressed short, <laughs> Sister Anna must add peace to the hem. <laughs> if it not have no sleeve, member sleeve I go put in. And if it ever got tight, hey, Sister Anna put in peace right in at the side. You have to look good. Then she would stand and look at you and say, 
in him. Now you look like you come out of my house. And down the road, Sister Anna would take you, whether you like it or not. You pretty fishy. Fix her upper. That was Aunt Anna. She selects some people who she calls special. And she, as she would say, me can see good things in you. Walk good, walk right, come here. I don't say you go wear your pants, it not go work. Aunt Anna would have called him. Tuck in that shirt into him pants. Pull up the pants to the waist. You no know, matter if it look like drapers to you. <laughs> but she go and put it up to your waist. And she go and fix that belt. Fit your waist, that means it can't come down back. He can adjust and come to her neat and proper. I think I know, I think she knows everybody in James Hill and the surrounding, and, the, and its surrounding. Anywhere in the house, whether outside or inside the house, as long as you call Sister Anna or, or Aunt Anna, she could tell whose name it was, and she answered you by name. She would send Howard to see who it was in the shop if she don't know or recognize the name right away. She would call, Howard, go see who in the shop. <laughs> Poor Howard have to drop where I do right away and run off somebody in the shop. Uh, Aunt Anna say, go see who it was. So he is off. She goes to town on some Mondays to restock her shop. On those Mondays, she would be up very early in the morning to be ready to be picked up by brethren by four o'clock. Sometimes she would be back so late in the evening, in the night, that she only have time to be prepared for bed, but she get the job done. Next morning, everyone in the house helped to sort things out, from the big to the little. She likes nice things and good company. People from everywhere would stop, in, would stop at the shop. I think more often it would probably a water stop, but it was for something, whether it be for something to eat, something to drink, or about someone, tell her something, or talk about God. I think I hear Aunt Anna, no. Yes, man. You forgive your life to God. If he was here, he would have said the same thing. That means she's talking to the person and the person I take it in. So she makes sure to tell them that if God was here, this is what he would have wanted. She would lend, she would lend a helping hand to anyone who can prove to her if she lend them or give them her hard earned money, they would make good use of it. So you have to prove how you're going to spend our money and how you're going to get good return. Aunt Anna have one son, like I said before, but mothers many children. If you say Sister Anna in the Church of God Circuit of Churches, one would know immediately who you're talking. That is Sister Anna. She was well known. One of her prayer songs would be, Prayer Bells of Heaven, Oh, how sweetly they ring, bringing the message to Jesus the King. Today she sings with the heavenly host. She loves to sing. I can remember if she felt persecuted, if she felt unfairly treated, she would sing this line. She unfairly treated, her song line would be, in the midst of persecution, stand by me. Lord, if not you, then who? You know me, sit on a stand buried. <clears throat> Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. I can't do it without you. She live, she live a full, and she live a full life. I have to say, I don't think she left one unfinished task behind. Today her life is over. We will never see her 
And it'd be more Today her life is over. I will never see or hear her again. But she will be remembered in our hearts, both near and far, and for the lives of the many she have touched. That's it for Sister Anna. Thank you. Thank you, my cousin Cheryl, for that remembrance of Aunt Anna. I tell you, we could stay here the whole day and Aunt Anna's story could never be told in full. Aunt Anna was just a remarkable woman, praise God. At this time, we're going to collect an offering. The ushers will be waiting on you as they come through the aisles. But we're going to be singing this song, Some Glad Morning, We Shall See Jesus in the Air. And um, for those of us as Christians who believe in the resurrection of the dead, one day Antenna will arise. And for those of us, if we don't go to sleep like her, we will meet her in the air with the saints. Praise God. So I want us to sing the song the way Antenna would have sung it. All right? Meaningful, with light, with anticipation. Praise God. So musicians, get yourselves together. I saw some people grabbing their tambourines. Yes. Grab the tambourines, clap your hands, do whatever you do. But sing this song to the glory of God. Some good morning, we shall see Jesus in the air.
one more time not because of her goodness but the goodness of your Jesus just want to God to consecrate and bless this offering mighty God that the hands of your people have given mighty God right now I go before us mighty God that we go by the, the Holy Ghost mighty God and Spirit Jesus in your name of Jesus you are worthy this day. Yes, Mighty God, bless us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Remember the families that are grieving. It is not a easy road, God, yes, but you will strengthen them. You will give them the, 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 the strength to endure. Mighty God, bless and go ahead, Mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have thine own way right now, God. Do your work, God. We bless him in the name of Jesus. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. At this time, we do have some open tributes, we call them. But these are just tributes from, you know, mostly the nieces and nephews and um, of Antona. But first, before we go into the family tributes, we're going to ask Mrs. Wilson. She is the past principal of Claude McKay High School. And so this time we are going to invite Mrs. Wilson to come with her tribute. Praise God. Moderator, officiating ministers on the platform and perhaps elsewhere, choir musicians, everyone in the congregation and outside within the hearing of my voice. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sister Ernest Stanbury helped me to find my youthful driving skills again. Hmm. Mrs. Hall, you would chide me, because I got here in less than 25 minutes from Garden Hall, Alexandria. I overtook everything that could have been overtaken on the road. And I didn't have an accident, thanks be to God. My first meeting with Sister Stanbury was when the decision should have been made under God for me to head the Claude McKay High School as the third principal, affiliated, of course, to the Church of God in Jamaica. All three of us have been. All three women. Yes, I think she was, she was on the interviewing panel. And she must have fell in love with me because I fell in love with her. After that, we, we got so close. And um, I believe she was one of those of whom the Lord prepared to vouch for me so that I could continue my journey, my trajectory in educational management. Pardon me, family if I make a coinage or, or an, an amendment to the name, Stanbury. I'm putting a D in there. You see, truly she was for me like a, a delectable berry in her countenance, always pleasant and warm towards me and other persons. I, she just exuded warm. But then I want to talk about her qualities. So I, I'm taking out the B and putting in a D there. And just say to everybody that for me, she, she, had, she was a woman of admirable social and spiritual standing. Admirable and enviable to all those who have spiritual ambition. A woman of excellent spiritual and social standing. She was a woman of high standards as well. And she was a woman of understanding. Dignified, chock full of modesty like I heard. Since I just got here, I heard that she was principled in her ways. And do you know, I thought when I met her and observed her, that she, her life must have been rooted and grounded very early in the wisdom of God. So that she delighted, she desired to be and delighted in becoming over time. 
a strong, holy woman. Our society is wanting holy women today. So then, she gradually exchanged her own ideals and her desires and her pursuits. But the things that she would have perhaps wanted to pursue, because we all want to pursue earthly things at some point. She gradually shelved them and cottoned on to what God's holy word speaks about. All that is highlighted in, in the word. And so she capitalized on the important relationships in life, three of them. Relationships, the relationship with the creator God. She knew that her life was founded on that. She believed in the fellowship of the believers, the brethren. She spent her life among the brethren. And then she served and loved her fellow men. Sister Anna was in my corner from day one. And the school could never have a function of, we always try to have functions of substance that could help the children with their personal and intellectual and spiritual development. So she would have been there to help with devotions, to conduct devotions. Mrs. Hall here will bear me witness. I don't think a graduation exercise missed her, unless perhaps she was ill. All the school events to foster the development of the children found her in attendance. So she quietly and purposefully, on purpose, supported the school because she believed in education. And she wanted the children to be exposed to spiritual education. So she contributed as often as she could. So that when the Lord tried to, well, he didn't try, he did it. He dropped it in my spirit to begin a senior citizens club so we have, the nas nationally there is a Senior Citizens Association, and I thought I would begin one at the school. Sister Anna was one of the first members of that club, and that, and that was like 2011, coming on until I retired, 2014. Always there, early. And one of the objectives of that club was that it should be a kind of watchdog. So I heard that sister speaking, I know of the students at the school to ensure that they towed the line, that they adopted good principles, that they were punctual and all of that. So the children could not then, even before that, I came in and heard that you couldn't loiter around by her shop. And you couldn't mess about, because the messing about would be counted as evil and self-destructive. So she would guide the children away from that. So. The Claude McKay High School got her support. They were a counseling group for the students and a guiding group for them. All in all, I must just sum up by saying that she's the kind of woman that I still desire to be like. I'm striving to be a holy woman of God. Our society, like I said earlier, bears repetition. We lack that. I was at a funeral yesterday and my heart was broken because a 29 year old came back with bullet wounds in a casket to be buried in my community. Someone who I saw coming up in the Sunday school, saw accompanying his grandmother, his great grandmother to the Wednesday night meetings when she was on her staff. Nice little boy. But because, and I say this without fear of contradiction, there was no holy woman in the mother to guide him. 29, he did not live to see his 30th birthday. The police shot him in very disgraceful circumstances. I wouldn't have liked a dog, my dog. I love dogs, still have three at the moment. My dog, I wouldn't have liked my dog to have been killed in that, those circumstances. And then the funeral service and they was, went well at church Although there was, I moderated and there was not my level of discipline. But then afterwards, right in the graveyard, when somebody who was drunk tried to get into the hearse. And then when pastor came, he said, Sister Will, something that happened in there, at the funeral, at grave. 
People want to lie down and the cats get drunk. Because there was no standard to guide. No standard. Would to God that many of us today would just listen and learn and do, imbibe what we can. It may be late, but it's not too late. Her soul rests in peace. Amen. Okay, everyone, although we said the segment was for open tributes, it's open, but it's really closed because it's not going to be open for anyone who wants to come up. But what I'm going to do now is to read some tributes from some nieces and nephews of Aunt Anna. And these folks are abroad. So um, we have some in the USA and um, Canada and England. So please bear with me as I read some family tributes at this time. And the first one I'm going to read is from Aunt Anna's, one of her nephews, Calvin Stanbury. And he is in the USA. And he says here, my wonderful Aunt Anna was a very lovely person indeed. Aunt Anna was a woman who calculated how to care and show love to everyone. She had a very unique voice that was sweet and a fragrant love in the way she spoke. I cherish her voice and her gracious words. Aunt Anna showed love in her actions also. Her love was tangible in unforgettable ways. When we were little children of three or four years old, we were usually greeted with a kiss during our visit to her house. But me, that's Calvin, I used to hide myself away because the aunt and a kiss was too powerful for my little frail existence. Yes, I used to hide. I would stay in our van until all my siblings had gone inside her house and gotten their aunt and as greeting. Then after a long, long time had passed, I would tactically camouflage myself into the mix of young Stanbury flock. But no disguise whatsoever or covert scheme of a four-year-old could escape Aunt Anna's kiss. For her sweet voice, like a dear, lovely detective charmer, would ring out, where are you, Calvin? Come, come and get your greeting. For you are so little and sweet. Then my little delicate red lips would get my share of the famous Aunt Anna's kiss. Yes, there are numerous happy memories about my lovely Aunt Anna. I also firmly remember her for the joyous ways in which she would sing at church. There was no dull moments to anyone's hearing, for you would be saturated with the blessings that stirred up within you as Aunt Anna sings, we shall rise, hallelujah, we shall rise, amen. And glory to his name, hallelujah, we shall rise. And the next tribute that I'm going to read is from Marin Savory Lewinson, and that's one of Aunt Anna's nieces, and she's in Canada. She wrote here, Aunt Anna was a woman of God. I kept in contact with her by visiting or by phone calls. She would never let me go without praying for her, praying for me. Now she is no longer here, she gives me her blessings. Yes, um, she agreed with Calvin that her voice was her sweet signature. It was unique in every word she spoke. She was a blessing in so many ways. She taught me some important lesson skills. There are too many to tell. I'll always remember her in a special way. She's now joining, joining the happy chorus where angels are holding their wings, for angels never felt the joy that true salvation brings. I hold her prayers dear to my heart. She's only peacefully sleeping. We will see her again someday. Praise God. And here's another one from Dahlia, and she's in the USA. That's one of Antonia's nieces. My sister, she says, good evening, everyone. I would like to say that Antonia was a woman of integrity. She was highly respected in her community. It was always a delight to spend holidays with her and for the occasional one-day visits. I enjoyed her pot roasted beef and the potato puddings. She would cook. She lived a life of poise and dignity. She was exemplary and demonstrated a practical Christian life. 
She was a true aunt indeed. Howard, thanks for sharing your mom with us. We equally share with you during this time of loss, but we rejoice in the cemented hope that one day we will be reunited with her in our mansion home that Jesus is going to prepare for those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Aunt Anna is absent from the sickness and suffering and may her soul now rest in peace. Praise God. And this other one is from her niece Eleanor from England and she wrote, if I could be there in person, this is what I would have liked to have said about Aunt Anna. I only got to know Aunt Anna later in her life and found her really easy to love. Her sense of family was always evident, along with her willingness to help others. It was so obvious that she was a God-fearing woman who was deeply committed to pleasing her Heavenly Father. She had a strong sense of justice and fairness. Doing the right thing matters deeply to her, even at the risk of upsetting others. I was so impressed with her deep sense of honesty and her attention to financial details. Without her support in handling my father's finances in the latter part of his life, things would have been very different. So thank you, Aunt Anna. Sleep on, and I'm living to make sure that when the dead in Christ is resurrected to meet him in the air, that I will be amongst them along with Aunt Anna. Praise God. And so we have just one last um, tribute, and this is so um, Aunt Anna and her siblings, there are 10 of them, there were 10 of them, and so um, only three were alive before Aunt Anna passed away. That's my dad, brother, most people know him as Brother Ned, and then Aunt Vinette, her daughter Cheryl had come up earlier, and then Aunt Anna. So right now, it's just my dad, Brother Ned, and Aunt Vinette who are left. So on behalf of my father, who is 93, I just want to read this tribute based on how we as his children remembered Aunt Anna, praise God. Aunt Anna, as we called her, meant a lot to us. Aunt Anna has been a constant in our lives. She and Dada have always been in communication, whether it's she, when she was living in Tom, we were living in Thompson Town, or we went to James Hill to visit her. In the past few years, a month cannot go by without Dada asking to speak with Aunt Anna. When we were young, Aunt Anna provided a place for us to spend summer holidays with her son Howard and mother Granny Rose. It was so much fun serving in her shop, making apple jam, and just being introduced to the neighbors as her niece or nephew. When we think about Aunt Anna, we will always recall how she helped to raise two of our siblings, those would be Rayon and Claude, and that was after the death of our mother. She also provided boarding accommodations for Joan and me, Corrine, so we could go um, to Frankfield High School getting reliable transportation from here in James Hill. Aunt Anna was always dependable, making potato pudding for Dallas when her pregnancy cravings set in, and even helping Dallas in Florida to move. When Aunt Anna is around you, she would assist in whatever way she could. Aunt Anna lived a life that was full of Jesus. The best memories were when we went to church services with her. Aunt Anna will always be remembered well. Until we meet her again in glory, may her soul rest in peace. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have the eulogy, and that's going to be read by two of Aunt Anna's um, grand nieces, and that would be Laventina, um, Meredith, and we call her Lovey, and um, her sister Beatrice Lambert, um, and who is um, her two nieces. All right, come on up. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Lovey, and I am Beatrice, a.k.a. Sylvie. Ernest Hemingsway, author and journalist, once said, and I quote, we quote, Every, Every man's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one man from another. End of quote. 
Rubina Stanberry, affectionately known as Sister Anna, Aunt Anna, Deaconess Stanberry, or Sister Stanberry, was born on the 22nd of February, 1933, the parents, Emeria Stanberry and Rosen Stanberry, in the district of Carters Hill, Clarendon. She was the eighth of 10 children from the union, several of whom predeceased her, leaving her brother, Edward Stanberry, brother Ned, and Vinette Savory. Her father died when she was a little girl, and her mother took her to live with Aunt Sol, the well-off Buchanan's family at Cowpen in Clarendon. Here she attended the Frankfield Elementary School. Being the ambitious, independent, and no-nonsense teenager that she was, she went in search of work, which took her to several places where she worked as an excellent housekeeper. While she was in Kingston, she learned the skill of dressmaking. After spending several years in Kingston, Sister Anna went back to her family home in Cartes Hill. And there she had two children, Marvelyn and Howard. Marvelyn predeceased her. Sammy, her eldest brother, lived with their mother, Rosen Stanberry, at Zion for a while. Sammy migrated to England, leaving his sons, Danny, Bunny, and Patrick, in the care of Granny Rose. Sister Anna and her son Howard went to live with them at Zion. With the help of her brother, she saved enough money and bought herself a sewing machine. She continued her dressmaking at Zion. But because business was slow, she then decided to move to James Hill at a rented property. She was encouraged by the late brother Wren and Mas Dermot, they were business people, to extend in her business venture. She continued not only to establish herself as an excellent dressmaker, but she opened and operated a convenient variety store. She was very knowledgeable about fabric and was able to guide her customer with their purchases. Her business venture did not only create employment for community members, but served the James Hill community and all the adjacent districts with whatever one wanted, from a pin to an anchor. With hard work, determination, and her unwa unwavering faith in her God, she was able to purchase her own property in James Hill and set up her home and business place, which she named Faith Cottage. Sister Anna was a woman of integrity. She was a principled, peaceable, and kind person, especially to children. She was an encourager and was always ready to share her faith with just about anyone. Sister Anna also served her community well. She was a member of the Board of Governor of the Claude McKay High School, the Senior Citizens Club, and the James Hill Citizens Association. She was a foundation member of the Church of God in Jamaica, James Hill, where she loved and served faithfully and selflessly over all these years up to the time of her death. It is difficult to think of an area that Sister Anna did not make an impact. She served as choir member, Sunday school teacher, church secretary, general assembly delegate, deaconess, lay preacher, just to name a few. Her hospitality was above par when she catered for ministers and invited guests at the church. Howard, her son, migrated 
and due to the crime situation, they decided to terminate the business of the convenience store. A number of family members, nieces and nephews, and non-family members lived with Sister Anna for a while over the years. I was one of them. <laughs> in, her, in her latter years, she became ill, and as her health deteriorated, she was cared for by several caregivers, supervised by her son Howard, niece Pauline Peters, and family friend Mr. Lloyd Scott. Several special mention must be made of caregivers. Sister J, where's Sister J? Can stand? And Sister Mitzi, where's Sister Mitzi? And they put up with the fun time and the not so fun time. Amen. They all did excellent job. Please give them a round of applause. They were not weary in well doing, and trust me, they will be rewarded. Amen. Sister Anna's condition worsened, and she was taken to the Percy Juno Hospital. She peacefully made her transition on the 9th of May, 2022, to be with her Lord and Maker. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Left to mourn her passing are her son Howard and daughter-in-law Carol, Two grandchildren, Stephanie and Jeremiah, brother Edward Stanberry, brother Ned, and sister Vinnie Savory, and a host of nieces, nephews, church families, and friends. Death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetually shines on her. Thank you from the depth of my heart. Especially, um, somebody mentioned uh, Mitzi and uh, Sister J, as I generally call her. I think I owe you a debt of gratitude. Things I could do, and you do it for me. And I'm very, very thankful for it. And if you ask me if I'm mournful, if you ask me if I'm sad, I would be honest to you, I said yes. If you ask me Are you happy? I can honestly tell you I'm 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 happy. Knowing something is coming and will come. For me, for anybody, for every one of us, as the Bible says, appointed a man wants to die. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really stop there. It said, after death comes the judgment. Mm -hmm. And those who are dying, Christ shall rise. Mm -hmm. So my expectation is to meet her one day. Mm -hmm. The only problem for me is to live the life to meet her, yes. knowing we have to die. If we want to go to, if we want to, go to rest with God, we have to die because this body, the body out there, will never see heaven. You cannot see heaven, you got to go back from whence it came. But the spirit within us, 
will live forever. And that encouraged me, although the selfish part in me can let go. I know for a fact if she doesn't go, she'll never see him. And I want her to have the rest. But someday, sometime, you know, that selfish part got to go to rest. But I want to say thank God. Thank you for your presence as we are this morning. Amen. Praise God. It took a lot for Howard to come and say that, but you know what? He means it. Thank you, caregivers, for just making Antonis end of life well. And praise God. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be praying for you, Howard, and we're here for you. Praise God. Um, the last item we're going to have before we hear the sermon is an item from the James Hill Church of God Choir. And I know they will sing just the way Anthony used to sing on the choir. Yeah. 
the choir. I used to hear Antonis singing way back when I was a little child visiting this church. You did justice. God bless you. Praise God. At this time, without any further ado, we are going to be hearing the sermon. And I just want to quickly just read a quick bio on um, Pastor George Lewis. He started his pastoral journey right here at James Hill Church of God in, in 1986. Then he went to Savlamar Church of God, and now he is in the ministry at the Constant Spring Road Church of God. He's a chaplain at Arden High School. He has a wife and three beautiful children. With that being said, help me welcome Pastor George Lewis to the table. The Lord's peace be with you. It is never always a joyful occasion, but when you talk about coming to a service to honor the life of someone like Sister Stanberry, it must be a joyful one. Yes. Because she lived and she knew that the day would come. It was only a matter of where. So, my brother, we go way back. Still play cricket? <laughs> but um, I know you're hurting. I told you the story, how I have been struggling to deal with the death of my mother, and she's gone a couple of years now. And I have had to develop my own little way of grieving. Um, especially when I'm going to have my coffee and my crackers. <laughs> my mother loved her coffee and after many years I just decided I would start drinking coffee. <laughs> and I adopted the same way of going about it, two crackers in the morning, first thing with coffee. When she died, I found myself struggling to have coffee and the two crackers. Every time I would push my hand in that bag, I would remember mama. So I quickly pulled three crackers to distract it. <laughs> but I don't know that it's working. But time, time will get me there. And I want to offer uh, from my own family condolences to the church community and to family. I stayed in Sister Hannah's house when I just came to James Hill. Yes, yeah, so I really can testify of her hospitality, of the class of woman she was. The church is not going to be poor, and I must admit, because you see, there, we, we operate in cycles. She contributed her part. We who are here now need to step up. Because as hard as she worked, she could not have done your part, not mine. I came here and I spent just a little under three years and there were three glorious years. They actually set the tone for almost 14 years of service to the Savannah Lamar Church of God in Westmoreland. And having left Savannah Lamar, I moved into Kingston, and this is my 19th year. 19, 19 years in Kingston. But sure enough, I am back in my parish today. Yes, and I'm so excited. I want to share with you for a few minutes from the book of Genesis chapter 5. You know, I wrestled with this for a moment. Should I talk about that female in the Bible, Hannah? But no. Somehow I am led to talk about a man. A man who started his distinguished relationship with God when he was 65. Do you know who that was? He was 65 
and he walked with God. Amen. Enoch walked with God. When Enoch had lived for 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after the birth of Methuselah for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And I like this part. It says, Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more. Because God took him. If for a moment you'd allow me to transgress, it must be sinful to put Sister Hannah's name where Enoch's name is. I, I beg pardon. But just put her name there. Please Hannah Stanberry walked with God. But she died. You know that. I find it fascinating that great servants of God walked with him and they all died. And then we get to this place where it says, Enoch walked with God and he was no more. There is a difference. There is a difference. My best love story in the Bible is the one about the prophet Elijah. Yes. Hey, boy. You see, I'm wearing oh, this, what is it? Is this a robe? Whatever. I wore it deliberately. Sister Hannah made me my first robe. I still have it. I chose to wear this new one because it was designed for this season. But I proudly wear the one she made me when I did my first baptism in 1987, I think it was. Yeah, no, no not 87. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. First baptism here. She made me that robe and I cherish it. So I am doing this today in her honor. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Now, Enoch walked with God. Hence, my topic today is walking with God. Walking with God. And this is something we should all aspire to do. A few years ago, I had the pleasure of doing the wedding of an American. And a member of the party walked up to me at the end of the service and he said, you will never become a professional. And I thought it was an insult. And then he continued, he said, you are so good at what you do. You know, that made me smile a bit. But the point I want to make is that he said, you will never marry another person as important as the one you just married. Now, I think that was a not so kind of thought. You know why he said that? He worked beside the United States President Bill Clinton, they worked from the same Oval Office or White Office, Oval Office. And so he thought he was important. <laughs> no. I have walked with prime ministers, governor generals even, finance ministers. I have walked beside with business people. But nothing is more wonderful Come on, say it with me. Nothing is more exciting than to have a walk with God. Amen. So that's the walk I value. 
Because some of the people you walk with, after that first encounter, you will have to introduce yourself again. The moment you start that journey with God, he knows you in a familiar way. Walking with God. Amen. Walking with God, this is really, really important. Enoch walked with God. His walk is quite similar to the walk you and I are having today. Walk here is speaking to a relationship yes. where they actively traveled from one point to the next point. So it was a walk. And I think of a man who on the cross had that privilege. Though he was at the point of death, he begged Jesus, let me walk with you. And Jesus said to him, today today you will walk with me and that is exciting Enoch walked with God for 300 years having begun his journey at age 65 65 he was just beginning his walk with God and this tells me that 65 years were lived outside of that walk with God. How many of us here today, 65, and we are still not at the place to say we are walking with God? How many of us above 65 and we are still not walking with God? My question to you then, who are you walking with? Are you happy? Are you really happy? But Enoch walked with God for 300 years. And I put it this way. Enoch, when he was 65 years of age, legitimized his relationship. He made it right with God. Because there are times you hear of somebody living with somebody and they say, it's not quite... You know, they are just living together but when they do the thing we hear that they are no husband and wife it is legitimate so they can claim each other Enoch could truly say he belongs to me as much as I belong to him my God and I are friends we walk together we talk together. We have good times. Amen. Enoch's walk was not a suspicious walk. You know that? It was not a walk where you begin to wonder. What really is going on with Enoch? And in, if, if Enoch were living in our day, we would ask, we have not seen him in the last couple of days. And we don't believe in the rapture thing. That him gone and we don't know. That's not it. We believe that, or we would conclude that he must have been kidnapped. Now that one is trouble. Because we're doing that in these days. So there was no suspicion when Enoch was no more. Because the word says, God took him. God took him. So at a point in Enoch's life, he made this choice to walk with God. And the walk Enoch, Enoch, Enoch had with God, it demonstrated his lifestyle. His walk was a lifestyle walk. So you can't walk with God and not be your true self. Really and truly. I have walked with God for over 40 years. Over 40 years. And I am still me. Still me. 
Amen. 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 Lifestyle. When we walk with God, it is about the quality of life we live. It is by his grace that we all live today. So he would laugh. He would eat. He would drink. He made a family. But it was all part of his lifestyle. I want to also say that the walk is precious. And I use the present tense because I want it to speak to us as well. The walk Enoch had was precious, but the walk today is precious. God takes delight to relate to man. He relates with us or to us. And I must admit, there is no greater, no greater relationship that we can produce here on earth outside of the one we have with God. None. We have relationships and oh, we feel that, oh boy, this is just great. But when we walk with God, sometimes we can't explain it. We can't express it. We just have to shout it. We just have to shout it. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember my days here in James Hill, and some of you will remember. Was it Brother James? Brother James, when the word was sweet, Oh, come on. Entertaining word from home. And he was, that was Brother James. He was bubbling on the inside. My friends, I don't care. But when I am happy with God, I'm just happy. And if I have to ball, I will ball. I don't care about you. Because I know what it is to walk with God. And sometimes when I'm having those precious moments, it doesn't mean I would, I'm not going through a struggle. But God is so sweet. Amen. He's so sweet. And he is the strong tower. The one who lifts us up in those moments when we feel like we are going under. He is there with us. Because the writer says, he walks with me. And he walks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other. Amen. Amen. The walk is a conscious walk. Consider Adam and Eve. The word says as they existed in the garden. Every day when it was school, God would come down. And they were able to consciously connect with God. They had sweet fellowship in the garden day after day. My brothers and my sisters, it was a relationship that was filled with humor. Enoch's life was not one of, you know, like they say about some church people. Church people, smile. Smile, laugh. Do you remember Sarah? Sarah? God whispered something to Sarah. That will make people laugh. Don't. When God told Sarah that she was going to get pregnant, you know, probably, say, <laughs> you know, hiding her face. Church people don't talk like that, do we? But Sarah had a laugh, the laugh of her lifetime. But her laughter turned into joy. Because she did. She did. God will make us laugh. Even when we are being criticized by others. When people are laughing at us, we can still have humor. Yes, she had much of it. Amen. You see, the walk must be 
not just humorous, conscious, and precious, but it must be harmonious. For it is said that two cannot walk together unless there is an agreement. Enoch walked with God and they were in agreement. For if God says, Enoch, we're going down the road, he would just simply say, God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready. I remember when God pulled me out of James Hill, pulled me out of James Hill to go to Westmoreland. Got the, the application, it, it was sent, and I crushed it because I had absolutely no desire to go way down to Westmoreland to serve. And after a while, I went to my wife and I said, where is the letter? She said, you crushed it. <laughs> because I had absolutely no intention of going. And so the Lord pulled me out. I spent almost 14 years in Westmoreland. And I thought that would be it. And then in the middle of what was a really great work, God said to me, you're going to Kingston. Now that one, I, I didn't crush anything, but I cried morning, I cried nighttime, I cried everywhere I went. It didn't make a difference if I had strangers around me. I just bawled because I was trying not to go. Now I'm in Kingston 19 years. Where will God send me next? I want that to be absolutely clear. That I am not stuck in any one place. For if God is leading, then my job is to, to go. To go where he wants me to go. For only then it will be a blessing to me. For I tell you, had I remained in Westmoreland, I probably would not be alive. Just think of it. You know, we operate with a sort of selfish uh, kind of uh, uh, intention. We just want. Yeah, man. Westmoreland was good in many ways. But God says it's time to go. And having left there, I have not regretted a moment. Just like I am not regretting having left James Hill because it was God. Yes. I am here today because I am still regarded as one of your own. Amen. And I feel a sense of pride to be able to come back. Amen. I am so thrilled to be able to come back. And I say to you, I am still walking with God. Yes. Still walking with God. The word says... Enoch walked with God. It was a, a harmonious relationship. They all agreed. And every time they walked, it was an exciting walk. The walk is glorious. Glorious. One songwriter puts it beautifully. He says, it is inexpressibly sweet. And words like marvelous and wonderful are used, but these words are still inadequate to express the kind of walk that Enoch had with God. I'm going to be closing shortly, and I'm going to be turning to a song that I believe we all know, or most of us. It's a glory to walk with God. This glory speak to the excellence of relationship and benefits Enoch enjoyed with God. You cannot walk with God and not have excellence. Excellence. Because that's what it means. Excellence. So Enoch's walk with God was an excellent walk. The relationship was excellent. It was characterized by quality conversation. 
It was characterized by the kind of attention that he received every day. When we walk with God, it is not a relationship that is hot and cold. Now and then, up and down, it was constant. Constant. It was an excellent relationship. And as Enoch walked with God, he got to that place where God says, Enoch, I don't want you to go and sleep. I just want to continue this good old relationship. Come, let's go. So I will talk about my favorite prophet, Elijah. But of course, Elijah is my best prophet because he had a double portion. But when Elijah walked with God, it was a walk of excellence. It was a walk that was just beautiful. It was different from other walks. He had his servant, Elisha, walking with him. And everywhere Elijah went, Elisha walked with him. He says, I'm not leaving him because he's walking with the most important of all beings ever existed. I am not going to leave him. And so he kept walking. And his master said, stay here, for I must go. He said, no, 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 I am walking with you. And his master said, you know what? God is going to take me away. Isn't it awesome? He knew that God would one day take him away. And so he kept walking. Because he knew that the next step could lead into the pearly gates. The next handshake could well be the hand of God himself. And so he knew that the next voice could be the voice of the eternal God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So he kept walking, but Elisha walked with him. And so he said, I must go across Jordan, wasn't it? Yes. He said, stay. He said, uh -uh, I'm going with you. And I like this part. When they got to the Jordan, think of it. Muddy Jordan. In all of its flow, Elijah took his mantle. And we are told that the water parted. And the King James Version says, hither and thither. The waters parted and there was dry passage for them and they walked over. And then as Elijah walked, Elisha cried out, Master! Before he could count, chariot of fire, horses, they escorted the man of God. And away he went. The young prophets went in search for Elijah. But they found him not because God took him away. God has a way of just taking some people out. you then you are safe you are safe and so let me quote from this psalm it says it is glory just to walk with him whose blood has ransomed me it is rapture for my soul each day it is joy divine to feel him near, where'er my path may be. Bless the Lord, 
It's glory all the way. It is glory just to walk with him. It is glory just to walk with him. He will guide my steps around through me. It is glory just to walk with him. It is glory just to walk with him. It is glory just to walk with him. He will guide my steps aright through the veil and o'er the night. It is glory just to walk with God. Amen. Amen. Walk with him. You will never be lonely. You will never be lonely. It's guaranteed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you, Reverend George Lewis, for that charge, for that sermon, walking with God. At this point, we come to probably the very most important part of the service. We are God, our maker, who created us for the only purpose of having a relationship with him. Today, he's saying to anyone here today who has not answered his call, you're not here by mistake today. We're on a journey and we are walking. Every single person is walking on a journey. The question becomes, who are you walking with? You're either walking with the devil and his demons to hell, the destination, or you're walking with Christ, the Holy Ghost being our guide to that place they sang about earlier the New Jerusalem. Amen. The invitation is given. You are here today and you figured, ah, I'm going down to Sister Anna's funeral because she was such a nice lady. She walked with God. And today, the invitation is yours. Have a walk with God. Seriously. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have not a relationship with God, the invitation is here right now in this place. Walk with God. We're going to have an altar call. It's our duty as Christians to proclaim the gospel. Antana is resting with Christ, but we are concerned about any soul who is not walking with God. Feel free, don't be afraid, don't be shy. This is important, this is your investment in life eternal. Come to the altar. We don't need a song, you don't need to feel like someone is pushing you. Just come, Christ wants you. He's calling you for a relationship with him. Come and walk with God. Come now, walk with God. We're gonna ask everyone just to keep the children quiet. This is a time of prayer. If there's anyone who is in the hearing of my voice, be it in this physical tabernacle or on Zoom or whatever social media there is, in your living room, wherever you are in your car, if you're hearing the gospel today, Enoch walked with God. Antona walked with God. I'll give away my age. For 50 years, I've been walking with Christ. And he just gets sweeter as the days go by. Come to Christ. If you don't know him, just come on up here. I know Pastor Mackenzie, she has officers who will pray with you, they will take your name, they will follow up with you later. But at this time, would you be bold enough to come forward? Just come forward. Is there one soul today who wants to say, God, I want to walk with you from this day forward? Come forward. Come for a walk with God. Come, my friend, you're looking in. I've been watching you ever since the preacher was preaching. If you don't know the Lord, come. Get a friend outside, bring that friend with you. 
Anyone who needs to come to the Lord for this relationship to walk with him, this is your time. Come on down. Is there a brave soul? Is there anyone? Praise God. At this time, I'm going to hand back over to Pastor Elaine McKenzie, and she will proceed. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word. Now we'll have bereaved, pray for the bereaved family. We're going to ask Overseer Cooper to pray that prayer. We're going to ask the family to remain seated and those who are the rest, please just stand. Family, be seated and the rest remain. shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Our Father and King, we give you thanks, Lord, for today. Most of all, you give to us today a beautiful day. And so, Lord, we thank you for it. Father, we bring before you today this family, Lord, we are asking you, Father, for your guidance and your protection upon them. Pray, Lord, as they move from one place to another, I pray, Lord, that your presence and your guidance will be upon them. Lord, God, for those of the family who have not known you, Lord, as their Savior, King, pray, Lord, that this service, let them understand, Lord, that one day sooner or later, they will have to stand before the judgment seat of God, and they will have to give an account for all the deeds that have done in the body, whether it be good or evil. Bless the congregation today. Bless the preacher, Lord, who gave us a beautiful message. Pray that our hearts may be blessed today. And we will tell you thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, now we are coming down nicely. Stand your own and wait on this thing. Right, we are going to sing the first verse and the chorus and when we are going on to the second verse the platform party will lead off the family and then the congregation after that and we are headed i believe we all know where the body will be laid at carty's hill let us stand let us blend our voices together
that's called heaven It's made for the poor and the free These truths in God's word He has given How beautiful heaven must be How beautiful heaven must be Sweet home of the happy and free Fair haven of rest for the weary How beautiful heaven must be Pure waters of life there are flowing And all who drink may be free Rare jewels of splendor are glowing How beautiful heaven must be How beautiful heaven must be be. Sweet home of the happy and free Fair haven of rest for the weary How beautiful heaven must be The angels so sweetly are singing Up there by the beautiful sea Chords from their golden hearts ringing How beautiful heaven must be How beautiful heaven must be, must be Sweet home of the happy and free Fair haven of rest for the weary How beautiful heaven must be how beautiful heaven must be oh how beautiful heaven must be Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy, a friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, ah yes, these things too I will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow, I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. Please be quiet. We have gathered here to commit to the rest of our body, our loved one and friend, Sister Hannah Robina Stanberry. Here is a form of one whose memory we shall treasure. 
Some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship with our loved one. Let us cherish the many memories that come to us at this time. And let each of us here purpose to seek the Lord with all our hearts and respond to the opportunities of salvation extended through his grace. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? We then beseech you that he receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is here. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. We are now going to blend our voices. I'm asking you to come down and let us blend our voices. This is the last that we are doing. Just come down, let us blend our voices, and we are going to sing where the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the save of earth shall gather over on the other side, and the road is called up yonder. I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. And let's say the words together. When the saints and earth shall gather over on the other side, and the road, and the road is called up yonder.
going to be a roll call. Oh, yeah. And all of us, our names will be called. With our, is our name written in that long book of life? Praise the Lord. We're going to sing by and by when the morning comes. <laughs> by and by when the morning comes. When
thousand to pray the last prayer. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Kind, holy, righteous, and eternal Father, Lord Jesus, as we have come to the end of our days, worship mighty God, putting away the remains of our loved one, mighty God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that each and every one of us, mighty God, will take a stand and we'll look in our lives and we'll see how we live and that we will leave Babylon and come. Bless and sanctify now, Lord. As we, O oh God Almighty, are about to move from the graveside now, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you go with us. Be among us, mighty God. As we look to you and we wait upon you and humbly ask of your mercies, in Jesus' name I pray. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you for your cooperation. God bless you. I'm a safe ride home now.